How will Jupiter and Capricorn speak to you and your sign? Find out at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for Jupiter in Capricorn and the astrology of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing year it is. We have an active and fabulous sky waiting for us up ahead, but in a way, we're kind of in the midst of it already. And that is because on December 2nd, 2019, that was when Jupiter moved into the sign of Capricorn. And I feel as I look at the sky, at least in December, it's going to be a little bit deceptive as to the journey under which this transit will take each of us on. So on the one hand, with Jupiter in Capricorn, well, for the collective, this tends to put a greater emphasis on the material, on ambition, and on understanding that it is all of our actions and the things that we give energy to that create a momentum that ends up leading to a legacy that we create collectively, but in our own individual journeys as well. And as part of this, chances are, at least in December, there are going to be some breakthroughs. Now, for some, this is going to be personal. For others, it's going to be uh, a lot more practical, but there are some quick gains and, and just wonderful luck that can find us. That really is the best way to put it. We are first going to have Jupiter speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus. Now, this is a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine, and it will be taking place right around the 15th of December. And when this alignment happens, it does represent a breakthrough of sorts, again, collectively speaking, with Uranus right now in an Earth sign also, but in the sign of Taurus, which is a very grounded energy, but in a different way, it has to do with being more methodical, and moving forward, but with Uranus adding innovation to that process. And there's also that sense of uh, where it is that we are being rewarded, perhaps financially so, for what it is that we are wanting to achieve. And so with Jupiter in Capricorn, having to do with goals, having to do with our careers and our life purpose, all of us are gonna find that sense of some gain that allows us to change our practical reality in some tangible way. Now, collectively, I think that this is going to be a breakthrough in our understanding of individual, collective, power, and also the power of social structures and where it is that the individual and the social structures actually can work together, can change each other in positive ways. It is gonna be just after that, right around Christmas day is when we are going to have a solar eclipse. Now, this solar eclipse is truly beautiful, I have to say. Now, normally when the sun meets Jupiter in the sky, this is considered the luckiest day of the year, but what will be happening under this sky is a solar eclipse meeting Jupiter, and this is going to be a clear sense of where it is that Jupiter wants to bless your life in a new way, but accelerated. A sense of true breakthroughs and leaps into the future and opportunities that seem to come out of nowhere, but feel really good. That can happen in our individual journeys. Uh, it is ultimately a solar eclipse, which is about the new and the next, but it seeming to come out of nowhere. Perhaps it is a sense of not just a new opportunity, but a real leap forward. And that is the energy really of December as this transit begins. This sense that we are making changes now and there's every reason for hope that things can change dramatically and for the better. I think that collectively speaking as well, there is gonna be a sense on the world stage of things changing in a practical way, in a structural way that takes us into a brand new future and a brand new understanding of what those social structures actually mean and how it is that they can be more prosperous for everyone all around. It is once we enter 2020, and that is when the astrology does change. Of course, what a lot of people are talking about is 
Saturn meeting Pluto in the sky. But it isn't just Saturn meeting Pluto, okay? Right around January 10 to the 12th, right around that area there, there's so much going on in the sky. I mean, it is really quite phenomenal what is taking place. There is a lunar eclipse and this lunar eclipse is happening right across the sky from, of course, the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. And it isn't just Saturn and Pluto there, but it's actually Mercury is there. Ceres, the asteroid is there as well. Now, I actually think that Ceres is going to continue to play a very important role. If you watched my Decade Ahead horoscope, I spoke about Ceres then as well. Now, Ceres is the uh, mythological uh, Roman goddess of grain and the goddess that spoke to the harvest as well and a fertile earth, if you will. And if you think about it, right, Uranus being in Taurus right now, and Taurus is a very earthly energy also, there's a sense just with Uranus being in Taurus that we are about to go through innovations, really big changes in how we understand not only our relationship to the earth, but also the technologies that we bring as we interact with the earth, perhaps in farming and agriculture as well. Well, it is series now. As Ceres is an intimate part of the sky at this time, chances are there is going to be some focus at this time on food, on food production. Uh, and it may very well be something that a lot of us are talking about, the systems and the structures involved in how it is that we interact with the land and interact with the earth, and especially and in particular, how it is that we gain harvest from the earth, the process of agriculture. Now this really is just the beginning. To give you a little bit of a heads up, it is gonna be in 2021 that Ceres is gonna be intimately involved in a series of squares between Saturn and Uranus and Jupiter and Uranus. And of course, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But I feel like this is important for now. The fact that Ceres is so active at this eclipse is going to give us some glimpses into the way in which the energy is going and the ways in which people are thinking about how they understand their personal and collective relationship with this space that we all inhabit, the earth itself, but certainly how it is that we interact with the food that we eat how it is that that food finds its way to us and how we feel about that. But of course, the big news and the thing that everybody is really excited about has to do with Saturn meeting Pluto in the sky. Now, some astrologers have called this the triple conjunction, but the truth is that they're not actually gonna be conjunct with Jupiter into consideration. Yes, there are gonna be moments when they get into orb, if you will, and they'll be kind of sharing energies. We'll especially see that as we get later into the year. However, it is not that Jupiter is going to meet Saturn in the sky in the sign of Capricorn. What will happen this year is that Jupiter will meet Pluto three times and then once we get to the winter solstice towards the end of 2020 at the very beginning of the sign of Aquarius is where Jupiter and Saturn are going to meet. Now I actually have a lot to say about this and I'll talk about that uh, as we go along because that to me really is uh, what astrologers have called the great conjunction for many millennia and that tends to be especially distinct and it does represent a real sense of where it is we understand that we are gonna grow forward from here. But I also think it is at the very end of 2020 that we are gonna to start to think a lot more futuristically based on the experiences that we gather now. If you think about it, the sign of Capricorn is one of culmination, right? In a chart, it is at the very top of the chart. It is the natural, uh, the sign that naturally corresponds to the midheaven, which takes place at the astrological zenith of the sky. And it is this very part of the sky that is most visible. But also, if you think about it, if you're familiar with an astrology chart, 
you know that the planets travel around they it, basically how astrologers understand it is the ascendant is the entry point and that uh, starts the first house and then the planets travel around they get down to the the IC which is the lowest point in the sky and it is after a planet crosses the IC that it starts to rise it becomes what we call a rising planet and from there it's going to gain energy and gain energy gain experience right start to understand what it is that they're first putting into place and i mean that planet starts to understand whether it's in our own individual charts or whether it is uh, collectively in terms of uh, the astrological charts of countries but it is there once the IC is crossed, that a planet begins rising, gaining energy, gaining experience, gaining manifestation, and also putting in the time, putting in the work, making the connections needed, making the changes needed. Once a planet gets to the midheaven, it is as high as it is going to get in the astrological sky. And this is where manifestation takes place. So this is where a full reaping of what you have been putting into place since going way back when that planet first crossed the IC. Now, as the planet crosses the MC, you start to reap going forward from here. Um, but at the same time, if you think about it, once it stops rising, a planet stops rising, it crosses the midheaven, it starts falling, right? That doesn't mean that it necessarily gets any weaker. It just means that the energy starts to change. And when we look at important big transits taking place, like we have in 2020 with all this Capricornian energy, there's a sense of culmination taking place here and accelerated manifestation taking place here with all these planets in the zenith of the astrological sky, symbolically speaking in the sign of Capricorn. Once planets start moving into Aquarius, it becomes a different thing. The nature of that sign is different because you did what it was that you set out to do, right? You manifested what it was that you were meant to. It's very clear, it's very visible as well. The midheaven is the most visible part of the sky. It's very obvious, it's very laid bare. But once energy starts moving into the sign of Aquarius, the priorities change and dramatically, these are very different energies. And so for now and for most of 2020, the focus is going to be on not only manifestation, but also what we are fulfilling, being more honest with ourselves about what has been taking place, what's been rising for a while. If you think about it with Pluto, it was Pluto in the sign of Cancer way back in the 30s, right? So since then, Pluto has been rising, the astrological sky rising, and is now, as Pluto moves through Capricorn, in its full culmination. So we are understanding something about the fullness of Plutonian power, and it is Saturn that is only accelerating that understanding. In some ways, this is hyper-physical, right? It's hyper-incarnated, if you will. It has a certain honesty to it, a certain stark reality to it. But the thing is, when we have so much energy in one part of the sky, and it's being accelerated in such powerful ways because of a lunar eclipse, no less, it's kind of like we need to intentionally, we as spiritual beings, as people who care about putting love and wisdom into the world, we have to actually decide that we are going to find a balance to that energy, that we are going to bring this sense of emotion in where things can be very removed, right? So if you think about it, a lot of people are talking about, and I don't like to talk too much about politics because I think that it divides people and I am very interested in, and I believe that part of my deeply held values is about unity and about uh, bringing people together. So I'm not gonna get very specific in terms of politics, but I will say that it can feel as if, and whether that's just our perception because the news that we're consuming, right? What we are experiencing uh, on one hand in terms of the information we allow in can be very different than the lived experiences of people, right? But it does feel as if, collectively speaking, we are in this place where we are being shown these very uh, deep parts of ourselves. Like with Pluto, 
we are being shown our shadow. We are being shown where it is that we are projecting and not owning our shadow. Uh, and we see this, right, in cultures and in places, whenever you find that there is any kind of us versus them kind of mentality, right there, when you hear that, us versus them, um, that tells you that there is some projection of the shadow taking place there. Once we move out of that sense of truly seeing ourselves in each other, it is then that we start to not necessarily own our own Plutonian energy. Well, you bring Saturn into the mix and this whole process goes on steroids, if you will, right? It becomes that much more about separation. Now, there are ways in which that separation can lead to good things, but sometimes not so much. So I'm thinking about what I spoke of last year in the 2019 video that I did. I spoke about how um, I do believe that this Saturn Pluto conjunction in the sign of Capricorn, the last time this took place was uh, 500 years ago within a couple of months of the, um, the Protestant Reformation. And it was the Protestant Reformation that just dramatically changed the world, like so profoundly changed the world. It was a shift from the community being the nucleus of society to the individual being the nucleus of society. This was the shift. It was nothing less than that. And the world that has been created from that place since then is rooted in that shift that happened 500 years ago. So it has been in 2019 with all that South Node activity where we were being shown on the one hand, what is actually coming, right? It was a partly showing what is bubbling underneath, right? What wants to come forward because nothing exists in a vacuum. It's not like Martin Luther, uh, one day he uh, had his theses and he uh, put them on that church wall and that was it. No, it was building for a while. It had been building for years by the time that very iconic moment happened, but it was with the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto that the iconic moment took place that we can look back on and say, wow, that is when things changed. The changes were actually coming a long time. They were there, they were under the surface for quite a while. And so we have been seeing that. We've been seeing these different threads, if you will. And on the one hand, a lot of times we come to understand who we are based on going to a space where we see whom it is that we are not. And so on the one hand, we've had uh, what feels as if very different understandings, very different ways of approaching uh, society and the world and what it means to be human even, right? The values that we hold, the moralities that we hold, it can feel like there's uh, this sense of very different approaches to that. And yet there is a, a dominant power kind of changing now. There's a changing of the guard, if you will. And so even though we can't necessarily say that the iconic moment is going to take place right on January 12th, the fact that we have a lunar eclipse happening, <laughs> right? This powerful lunar eclipse with so many power players in the mix. I spoke of Ceres, I spoke of Mercury. I didn't even speak yet of the sun. The sun is there as well, right there with Pluto and Saturn as well. All of that means awareness happening. And so it is gonna be very interesting to see what happens in January, because I think that is when we are going to start to understand not only what is transpiring now, but which way it is that humanity and our understanding of power and the power worth having which way is it that it wants to go you know we live in such special times we live in such rare times as well and sometimes when we're in our space and in our daily uh, moments or as some call it the daily grind right when we're in it we don't always appreciate that really big astrological things are happening which means that really big collective movements are happening right now. And it is part of these very big movements taking place that ultimately create societies. They create cultures and they represent moments when a culture goes through a dramatic shift, a dramatic change. As much as the Protestant Reformation represented a new beginning and a change uh, 
for humanity, certainly bringing in Protestant philosophy, it is also something to consider that this was also a change for uh, the Catholic Church as well, because up until then it was the Catholic Church that really had the power, uh, especially in Europe at that time. And it was the Catholic Church, and again, I'm not talking about anybody's religion, I'm very respectful of, of all religions out there, of course. Um, I'm talking about these in terms of the historical and political forces that they were, the Catholic Church had its roots in community. It was a very strong community, hierarchical uh, kind of structure. And that structure dramatically shifted. It meant that humanity was going in a different direction towards the individual. It was no longer that we as humanity were looking towards people to interpret the word of God. It was people saying, no, I can interpret the word of God because I am connected to God. And that was huge, okay? That was so huge. That was a, a revolution. It was nothing less than a revolution. But of course, like a lot of revolutions, they are an inner revolution. And even though we have these, you know, sort of very dramatic external things that happen, I, of course, am much more interested in what is happening in people's hearts, what is happening in people's spirits, because it is there that the most important changes take place. And so, just like we had before, it is going to be different. We are in modern times. We are in different times right now. However, it'll be important to observe your own life, to see where it is that you are shifting you are understanding what is and who is the nucleus of your life and whom it is that no longer will be and which way it is that your spirit and your soul is calling you to go. It is nothing less than that type of year. Yes, we have this very strong, iconic uh, moments happening in January. But we've got other big things happening as well that ultimately are going to allow us to make greater sense of January and also to move towards the shift, to move towards the change. So when I say the change, I mean the way in which the energy is going to start to shift and move towards Aquarius and move towards air is i think the most important event yes we're talking about saturn conjunct pluto and you could say that's the most important event i actually think that is the precursor i actually think that that is uh what is getting a lot of attention and has a lot of you know cachet to it but it is the way in which we are going to start moving towards air as a collective that's going to start showing itself now so what is going to happen in the spring and throughout the spring? Saturn will be in the sign of Aquarius. It's just going to dip into the sign of Aquarius for a little bit before coming back retrograde and spending a few more months back in the sign uh, of Capricorn. It will be at the end of March that Mars will meet Saturn in the sky. And I think that this is going to be one of the stronger moments that we are going to have, and it is so important to pay attention to what is happening personally and collectively as well, because it is what happens right around that time frame, the weeks leading up to the end of March, the weeks following the end of March, where we are going to start to understand what is new that we are moving towards. What is the next thing? Which way the energy is going? where Saturn meeting Pluto is in a sense a culmination of energy, right? Just like there was something new starting, yes, with the Protestant Reformation, there was also the culmination of another important societal structural institution happening as well. It is going to be once the energy starts to dip in, first dipping in before it's fully in, not only at the very end of this year, but certainly as we move further into the 2020s and Pluto gets here, it is going to be that we are going to start to gain these glimpses. Which way is the energy going? How are things changing? What new structure of power is coming in for the collective? And more importantly, which way is it that your spirit is calling you to go? 
as part of creating structure and peace within you. There's something truly phenomenal about this. The fact that these are changing times isn't just about Saturn and Pluto, but it's about all the other stuff. And more importantly, it is about how it is that we are going to start moving away from earthly energy and towards air and mind and information. What that's going to look like, we are going to get a glimpse this year. And I share this because it is also really important with a year like this with so much hyper earthly, hyper uh, physical energy, not to get caught up in it because ultimately the earthly, the physical realm is an illusion. The physical realm is an illusion. It is a reflection. That's what I mean when I say an illusion. It is there to help you to understand spiritual lessons. And the spiritual lesson is always rooted in moving towards greater love and greater wisdom, moving towards the full embodiment of greater love and greater wisdom. And with a year like this, whatever pain, whatever disappointment, you know, whatever falsities you've taken on, whatever superficial things you've sort of bought into that get in the way of your full embodiment of love and wisdom and your unique expression of it, that is going to show itself. That illusion is going to fall with a year like this. This year is honest. I think that was one of the first things I said as I started this video. And what I mean by that is we see through the illusion of the physical realm and instead we bring our focus back on what is what is happening in my life right now. What is the stress? What is the worry? What is the uncertainty? What is this trying to teach me? How is this trying to make me better? make me a wise and loving person, or at least more so than you already are. That is when we restore our power, when we're willing to at least acknowledge and see through the illusion. And that doesn't mean that the illusion doesn't really uh, have a lot of energy to it, right? It can be hard when it feels as if uh, you got bills to pay and it feels like the money isn't there, right? That can be a very stressful thing. That is a stress that a lot of people live with. But it becomes stressful when we take our focus off of the core lesson that is there and keep our focus on the external, that is when the stress comes. But if it is that we're willing to just be comfortable, say, okay, this is happening in my physical reality. What am I learning? What am I understanding about myself? How is this a part of my journey towards greater love and greater wisdom? Just like that, we are empowered. Just asking that question empowers us. And that is going to be a part of the invitation that shows up for us as we start this year. And it's going to be part of what shows up again and again. And that is because of Jupiter meeting Pluto in the sky at key moments this year. It is early April, late June, and mid-November. Those are going to be the three divine meetings of Jupiter in Pluto in the sky. And this is about us getting honest on the one hand, right? Honest, honest. That's what this year is. You know, where is it that we've been pursuing a path or been in a relationship or been, you know, focused on an outcome that really is not honoring of what is truly authentic? It is going to be these very moments that heighten that awareness for us, that show us that almost viscerally so in powerful ways. Now of those three dates that I gave you of Jupiter meeting Pluto in the sky, it is the one in the middle at the end of June that is going to be the most powerful of the three. And that is because of everything else happening right around that time. Uh, we are going to be towards the beginning of a rare full month of eclipse season. Three eclipses are going to be happening back to back to back. And so we're already in the midst of eclipse season. And then there is Venus, Venus going direct. I'll talk about the retrogrades, the very important retrogrades happening this year in just a moment. But all of this suggests that this is going to be a time of ultimately waking up from certain illusions. But ultimately, it is in that waking up that we are restored. 
And I say that because throughout this year, Jupiter is going to dance in harmony with Neptune as well. I think this is so incredibly encouraging. It tells us that no matter what may be happening, what may be changing, we are connected to source. We are being invited to connect with faith, faith in ourselves, faith in our future. And it is just the right mix, right? If it was just all the star Jupiter, Pluto energy, it could be a lot. But because Neptune is there, we are feeling that whatever is transpiring in our life, even if we don't know where it's leading, it'll lead us somewhere good and it certainly will. As I just touched on, this is a year of very important retrogrades that are taking place as well. And retrogrades, especially rare retrogrades, like with Venus, like with Mars, when they take place, they represent a time of, again, reflection, self-honesty, but also this is ultimately about checking in with ourselves, clearing any karma, because retrogrades can be very karmic as well in karmic periods of time. But it is ultimately as part of helping to root ourselves, ground ourselves in what is real and what is authentic. It's almost as if we have to spend a little time where things aren't as clear where we're being shown more of what is within, within us, within a particular dynamic that maybe people don't necessarily see. And it is just beyond that, once the retrograde is over, that we emerge from that cycle and we emerge more ready, more aware, more open to the future ahead. So it is going to be in mid April, shortly after that conjunction I mentioned earlier of Mars and Saturn, well, it will be shortly after that that Venus will enter shadow in the sign of Gemini. And then a month later, going retrograde, and it is going to be just a few days before, in late June, a few days before that second meeting of Jupiter and Pluto, that Venus will go direct. Now, after that, about a month after that, what's gonna happen is as Venus is finishing shadow, before she's even finished, just days before she's finishing, Mars is gonna go into shadow at that time and we'll spend much of the fall retrograde before going direct and staying in shadow really right to the end of the year. The Venus retrograde season is distinct because it is taking place entirely in the sign of Gemini. And this is a sign that has to do with air, right? We just spent a lot of time talking about how we're about to go from Earth to air. We're about to go from this place of understanding our lives much more on the ground and in the grind to emphasizing a lot more about ideas. Well, where is heart in mind? Where do we bring our feelings, like Venus is so much about our feelings and about our hearts, how does that connect to our minds and our thoughts and our words? Because it is air energy that is inherently uh, detached and that can actually work really well. If you think about societies where they have strong air placements in the charts of the countries or the cities, these tend to be places where equality is especially prioritized. Uh, and we see this quite a bit, and this can actually be a great thing. This can give a greater access to education. If we're working with ideas and not necessarily uh, the physical and our physical circumstance, well, it makes it so that there is that sense of equality because we have that ability to communicate and we are judged or understand ourselves and understand each other through that sense of our ability to convey ideas. So in a sense, ideas and therefore air energy is the great equalizer. However, with Venus being retrograde in this part of the sky, this is not necessarily comfortable. It's not a comfortable placement for Venus. You can even think about it for yourself, right? You can feel it for yourself. If you understand the nature of Venus as goddess of love and beauty, finding herself not only in uh, a sign that is of siblings, right? And sure, there can be a familial love, but in a sign that ultimately is uh, so fast paced, is so moving, has so much movement and uh, static energy to it, 
um, she doesn't necessarily know where to go with that. Now, this is something that if you understand some nature of the planets, if you have that personal connection to the planets, and also if you understand even the signs, you can feel your way through this to understand. But yeah, Venus retrograde, not the easiest energy as it is, but then you add the element of it being in air, well, it makes it so that we may not necessarily know how to convey what it is we really love in every area of life. It's like we may not even know and we may become aware that we don't really know. But the thing is that that is a place of power, especially if we are open to experimentation. And the great thing about the energy of Gemini is that it is open to experimentation. That is one of the strengths of this sign. Now with the Mars retrograde season, the thing that makes that energy distinct is that that is happening in the sign of Aries. Now, this is Mars home sign. But here's the thing. Mars is ruling planet of Aries and ancient ruling planet to Scorpio. It was, as the ancients said, the ruler of Aries in its day and the ruler of Scorpio in its night. So the more intuitive qualities of Mars that show up when Mars is retrograde are actually much better suited to the sign of Scorpio than they are to the sign of Aries, which is a very forward moving energy. Uh, and it is an energy that's a lot more about expression and less about reflection as the water energy of Scorpio is inclined towards uh, by nature. So here you have, on the one hand, Mars, right? Ready to go, ready to go out there, you know, impulsive even, right? Passionate. And then having to hold back, having to reflect on one's instinct and passion. And sometimes that reflection can hold us back. Sometimes we're questioning where it was that we took action, where it was that we didn't. But it can also lead to us taking unwise action with energy like this so look here's the thing it's life okay you have to live it you do what's in front of you to do you show up and you do your best but it is going to be during this mars retrograde season that i actually think can end up empowering a lot of us because this is where we are asking ourselves what does it mean for me to be courageous what is my personal definition of courage and how can I be that? How can it be a part of me uh, truly to my bones and in my blood? That is part of the invitation of this time to find that place of honesty, to find that place of reflection that ultimately empowers us and propels us that much more forward. Now the propelling forward, that happens with Mars going direct, of course. But the retrograde season is more a time to connect with a deeper will within us. That is the strength of this time. And if we're willing to do that, then we can make the best of this time, the most of this time. And it can be part of, again, honesty. Mars is also an energy that is very honest as well. It is Pluto that has been called the higher vibration of Mars. And so it's very interesting to me with a year like this that both Pluto and Mars are doing truly distinct and special things in the sky with a year like this. They both represent transformation and change. They both speak to moving beyond the superficial, seeing through illusions, getting to the core, understanding what really matters in yourself, in life, stripping yourself of what doesn't and knowing that in that space, as you find what is essential, you find also what is authentic and what is truly you. Now that is true power and that is the power promised with a year like this. What I love about this year for us, well look, I just feel like I've barely gotten started and of course I'll be here to talk about it every single week, every single step of the way, as you know. But I will say this, a year like this says that we collectively are going through big changes. Structural changes are happening at this time. It would be wise if you are somebody who is the ruler of a country or you know somebody who is, uh, it would be wise uh, to 
be more strategic in uh, how you express your might and your power during the Mars retrograde season because, uh, you know, mix-ups can happen in terms of things like the military, uh, even sports as well. We'll be looking at that more deeply with that Mars retrograde and Aries energy. What is it that we ask our athletes for? Where is it reasonable? Where is it not? All of these are going to be reflected on more deeply culturally but you know all the light all the shine all the glamour is going towards Pluto and Saturn meeting in the sky but it's not just about that energy of course it's about the energy that we bring to it and if you bring to it an honest desire and an honest trust to align yourself with a life that feels truly authentic and truly your own. For some, it can be a year like this that represents a time of focus and greater success than anything you ever could have imagined before. But for others still, if you're listening to your life, this is gonna be when you truly walk on a whole other path, different than anything you've known before. And for you, as part of the unique vision for your life, that will be the path that leads you towards greater sense of self and that greater sense of success. But it's gonna be one that's truly yours and all yours. Not about what you've been told, not about you know what somebody else wants for you, but you what is it that's going to bring you peace when you get beyond the the external the material expectations what is it that's going to help you to connect with your core and help you to express yourself that honesty within you because here's the thing ultimately people resonate with what is honest whether it's you resonating with something honest in your expression or something that you want to do or whether it's other people resonating with you. If you're honest and if you're present, that truly is when there is breakthroughs and big authenticity and big success. Well, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you guys so very much. And I have uh, preview horoscopes coming up in this video. Now they are going to be the Jupiter special horoscopes that I recently recorded. Uh, these horoscopes are free for superstars or available for download on my website, NadiaShaw.com. I hope that you will have a look at it. And I will have preview horoscopes and special horoscopes available for 2020 in the days ahead uh, before 2019 is over. Uh, and if you're on my Instagram, you'll get those previews right away. But I'll let you know in my weekly videos when it is that those previews are ready and when they're ready on my website as well. And of course, decade ahead horoscopes have been up for a while and I loved doing those because I am so big picture, right? I do love looking at the larger trends and I hope that the decade ahead videos, in fact, all the videos that I ever put out, I hope that it inspires you to just be you because with a year like this, it is in being, authentically you that truly that is our superpower now and where it is that we're not necessarily in alignment with that a year like this is going to show that to us as well and so i hope that my videos remind you of that and at least for the jupiter special horoscopes which are coming up right now well it is these that focus on the opportunities for big blessings coming up ahead. I think the longest video was like 26, 27 minutes. That was uh, for Leo. And the shortest video I think was like 15 or 16 minutes. So these are videos that I put a lot into and I hope that you absolutely love them. But here coming up for your sign is the first minute of the Jupiter special horoscopes for Jupiter moving to the sign of Capricorn. And again, I hope you absolutely love them. Thank you again for watching. Thank you so much for your trust for another year. And as we move into a brand new decade together, thank you. It'll be a great year. Enjoy. Hello, fabulous superstar Aries. Welcome to your special horoscope, looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn and what it means for you in your sign from December 2019 right to December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit this is. If you take a step back and think about last year, Jupiter helped you 
to put certain things into place so that you could, in the fullness of time, manifest big things. Well, that time for manifestation is here. And of all the signs out there, yours is most likely to feel a sense of progress and breakthroughs and true success. Success that is that much more meaningful to you because chances are a lot of it is well earned. Now, whether it is that you're hoping for favor from higher ups, whether it is that you are seeking promotions, well, it is going to be this year where Jupiter is going to bless your path forward. But there's also... Hello, fabulous superstar Taurus. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn and what it means for you and your sign from December 2019 right to December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. We do have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. Now take a little bit of a step back. Over the course of the last 13 months leading up to this change of blessings, thanks to Jupiter changing signs, well, it was focused a lot on your own transformation, your own regeneration, as well as understanding resources and wealth and defining that for yourself. Well, it is now that you get to take all that you've understood about yourself and all the ways in which you have changed and take it out into the world. Bigger stages than you have known before, bigger adventures than you've had in a while, and so much more to learn, so much more to do. Well, all of that is going to show up for you now as you feel ready for new Hello, fabulous superstar Gemini. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn from December 2019 right to December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now and into this 12 months. Now think back, Jupiter has been moving through for the last 13 months leading up to this change through your opposite sign. And it's about you understanding yourself through another person. And it's the one-on-one -on -one alliances, a sense of sharing that you may have with others. It is now as Jupiter changes signs that some of those alliances are about to get a lot more real, more profound, and more authentic. And one of the most powerful alliances you're gonna find is with yourself. This is also a part of the sky connected to wealth and how it is that you go about creating wealth and how you understand it, whether that's practically in terms of your relationship with financial Hello, fabulous superstar Cancer. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn and what it means for you from December 2019 right into December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. Now think back, what has been happening over the last 13 months leading up to this transit? Well, you've had Jupiter moving through a very daily part of your sky. This is a part of the sky guy that is very self-oriented and allows greater organization to take place right where you are. Well, it is now as Jupiter crosses the horizon, comes up into the more visible part of your chart, that Jupiter will start to bless the part of your life that has to do with partnerships, relationships of all kinds, from business partnerships to romantic alliances as well. The ancients said that this was one of the best periods to connect with someone or solidify bonds that are already there. Hello, now, fabulous superstar Leo. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn and what that means for you from December 2019 right into December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. Now, take a step back. For the last 13 months leading up to this transit, you have had Jupiter moving through a part of the sky that has to do with all matters of heart, trusting your heart, and understanding what it is that you really want in your heart of hearts. Well, with Jupiter changing signs, moving into a brand new part of the sky for you, you get to go out there and live 
those very lessons. You are bringing them to earth, grounding them and making your life one that feels more aware of all the blessings that are with you. As part of this, there may very well be plenty of work related opportunities available to you. Chances are you're going to be very busy in the period ahead. At the same time, a real boost to your health can take place as well. So there's a lot to talk about here. Hello, fabulous superstar Virgo. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn from December 2019 right into December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And for you, look, you've spent the last 13 months leading up to this transit focused on getting your foundation right, fortifying the ground on which you stand and finding a place of safety within you. It is now as this transit begins and especially in December of 2019, there is so much fun on offer for you and this is setting up a year of truly memorable heart oriented moments in terms of every area of your life but including love as well this is set to be a year uh, again 12 plus month cycle where you are going to be getting in touch with what it is that your heart truly desires in every area of life fertile with ideas fertile with the potential of children hello fabulous superstar libra welcome to your jupiter special horoscope looking at jupiter moving through the sign of capricorn from december 2019 right into december 2020 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here what an amazing transit it is so you have had jupiter in the third months leading up to this move well has been moving through a part of the sky that has to do with the mind and communication and you have been expanding your mind in key ways well now it's time to lay your foundations to pay attention to what it is that you're building and the ground on which you stand it is what you do now and in this coming 12 month cycle that you will build on for the next six years to come to create really big gains truly manifesting wonderful things in the fullness of time which makes it that much more important to use this time well which is so very valuable this really is about setting your foundation in so many ways yes it's the foundation in terms of your home it's the foundation though hello fabulous superstar scorpio welcome to your jupiter special horoscope looking at jupiter moving through the sign of capricorn from december 2019 right into december of 2020 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here what an amazing transit it is we have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now and if you think back okay over the last 13 months leading up to this transit we have had jupiter moving through a part of the sky for you that has to do with prosperity so whether that's literal prosperity or seeing yourself more generously all of that was part of the learning well it is now as jupiter moves forward that this very spirit of expansion and optimism starts to infuse your mind and your thoughts and your words learning becomes that much easier and making connections with other people rooted in mind level intellectual interactions well that becomes that much more possible as a way to reach deeper within there's so much to talk about here because this is a part of the sky that is hello fabulous superstar sagittarius welcome to your jupiter special horoscope looking at jupiter moving through the sign of capricorn from december 2019 right into december of 2020 and what it means for your sign i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here what an amazing transit it is well before we jump in let's look at what has been happening over the last 13 months leading up to this change of jupiter well jupiter your ruling planet has been in your sign and this has been a special time a time when you have been asked to redefine yourself in key ways and to understand whom it is that you really are what it is that you really want first and most and to go do that as part of this jupiter in your sign can tend to make a person kind of lucky well now you're going to take all that luck all that self-knowing and take it to creating prosperity for yourself money money is the big theme right about now and there is abundance 
on offer for you. There's also a sense that now and in the period ahead, you are going to... Hello, fabulous superstar Capricorn. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through your sign from December 2019 right into December 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing cycle this is. What an amazing transit this is. So let's take a step back. The 13 months leading up to this, while well, you've been working on yourself and clearing space and allowing healthy closures to take place. Well, now, as Jupiter steps into your sign, all that space you created gets filled with the new and the next. All that sense of healthy closure is now gonna allow for bright new beginnings. This really is you embarking on a brand new chapter for your life, one that resonates deeply with what matters to you most and what is it that matters to you first. As you embark on this journey, very quickly your answers will become obvious. You are, of all the zodiac out there, in December of 2019, certainly the luckiest of all the zodiac. There is just such beautiful, big blessing. Hello, fabulous superstar Aquarius. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn and what it means for you from December 2019 right into December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. It is this very time that is important in and of itself, but it's more about how it is setting you up for the future, and the future is right around the corner. So to give you a little bit of a heads up, at the end of 2020, right around the winter solstice, Jupiter will meet Saturn in your sign. This is what the ancients called the Great Conjunction, and it always represents some sense of a reboot for the collective, some sense of a powerful beginning, but this is what you will be hosting. Now I'm sharing this with you now because I want you to consider that in the context of what is coming up for you with Jupiter in Capricorn is essentially setting the stage for these really big changes ahead. A brand new chapter that is rooted Hello, fabulous in... fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your Jupiter special horoscope. Looking at Jupiter moving through the sign of Capricorn from December 2019 right to December of 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. I'm so very excited about this for you. Take a step back. The 13 months leading up to this, you've had Jupiter moving through the very top of your sky, having to do with career and social standing and life purpose. Now, as Jupiter changes signs, it becomes about the truly big opportunities, the big vision for you and it becomes about enjoying yourself especially in the company of others you will find lots of supporters everywhere you go lots of social invitations but also professional group endeavors that maximize your blessings for you so there's a whole lot here to talk about let's take it one step at a time and let's start with december because december of 2019 is especially blessed. There are truly very fortunate alignments taking place in the sky that's going to let you know how good this energy